Let's go Mets! Let's go Mets! Mets fans, they hope for the best. Yeah, 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 yeah. But expect the worst. Most Mets fans have that same symbol as like the worst is always happening to us. Here we go, Jake! Here we go! Misery loves company. But now there's a new flag bearer for the Mets fan base. And he's hitting home runs with his fashion sense. In the beginning, I just kind of wanted to find a way to go to more baseball games. And if I sold more t-shirts, I can go to more baseball games. And, and then it got bigger and bigger. So big that St. Mary's High School grad Darren Meenan went from printing shirts in his parents' basement to having his own kiosk at City Field. Last year, I ended up signing a licensing deal with MLB. So now we can put the Mets mark on shirts, which is cool. Meenan's story isn't just a hometown boy making good. It's a hometown boy making history. The Seven Line has grown into perhaps the most successful independent fan-run company in pro sports. And it's the only company to ink an in-stadium deal with a major league. What goes through your mind when you see this from your parents' basement to here? It's crazy. Like, every time I walk up the steps from McFadden's, I pinch myself. I've been a Mets fan my whole life, so now to actually have a store in the stadium that sells things that I create is incredible. And no matter where Long Islanders go, they get a chance to hop on the seven line. I could be on vacation somewhere, you know, I, I've been at Disney World and I've seen people wearing seven line shirts. Meaning shirts are not only a huge hit with Met fans, they've created excitement and energy at City Field. The seven line army fills the center field stands for every game. They even make road trips and they've certainly gotten the Mets attention. Well, it's pretty hard not to notice them. <laughs> You got a thousand people wearing all the same t-shirts jammed in a certain section. She tip our hat to him when, you know, what, however this has come about, and we, we need to thank him. Even former Mets who come back to Queens remember Darren. And Darren remembers where his artistic inspiration began. St. Mary's High School, Mrs. Perkillo's oh, no. art class. I just to explain. Hey. It's here where Darren learned how to create and print his own shirts. And he said, I just don't want to have to wear a suit to work. And I Check. don't. Yes, and I don't want to have to have a boss. I want to be my own boss. And so the thing was, figure out what you love and figure out a way to make money doing it. And um, I think he listened. So take one die-hard Mets fan, throw in a creative name, creative fashion, and rabid fans. Let's go Mets! And you've got a brand new movement. If it wasn't for the fans and the people who show up to the games, there would be no seven line. There'd be no army. Jamie Stewart, News 12, Long Island. On a cold, rainy morning in October, it began. Beat Warriors Chaser. I'll tell my friends, oh yeah, I'm on the Quidditch team. They'll laugh. Oh. My name is Matthew Benamorito and I'm a chaser. Just like in the Harry Potter movies. Sort of. <laughs> Matthew is a chaser on the Hofstra Quidditch team. They're nationally ranked. People not perceiving it to be something as athletic as it really is. Woo! Yeah, baby! The rules are simple. Chasers score with the quaffles, while beaters use bludgers to play defense. The keeper is the goalie, and the seeker pursues the golden snitch. On the big screen, the snitch is a charmed flying ball with wings. Now it's a golden guy named Ozzy. What does it take to be a good snitch? A great snitch. Boat seekers are usually, you know, they have different characteristics. One might be a bigger, stronger person. One may be more agile than the other. So you have to take that into account and strategize on the spot. You don't need to be an avid Harry Potter fan to play the sport of Quidditch, but you do need to have athleticism, toughness, and a broomstick. Levitation is optional. People, you know, hit you in the face. They'll say it's an accident, but, you know, really, okay. Oh my gosh, injuries, plenty. Last year at regionals, one of our keepers actually got cleated in the neck. I broke my left clavicle, snapped in half, got surgery for it, and now there's a metal plate running through my left shoulder. From Quidditch? Yes. But the chasers and seekers aren't the only ones that have to fight through adversity. There was an allegation that the ball was blocked by a bludger that was still in the hands of a beater. Think it's easy being a Quidditch official? Think again. I'm constantly in between games running back and revising and checking to see that I'm actually calling plays correctly. Purple ball. It may not be Hogwarts, but this game is much tougher than any fairy tale. I played hockey, I played soccer, I played football. This is one of the most physically demanding sports I've ever played. Harry would be proud. At Hofstra, Jamie Stewart, News 12, Long Island. 
Greg Durso likes to push himself. Six. I was always an avid skier, an avid wakeboarder, and I, you know, through the years got pretty good at it. I kind of found it fun pushing myself and seeing my limits. Greg is still testing those limits. They've just gotten a bit harder. We were sledding down the trail all night long. The sled got too fast. We kind of bailed off the sled. And one time when I bailed off, there was a stump and my back kind of hit it funny and it shattered my spinal cord at uh, T5 and T6 about right here and then left me paralyzed at T4, which is just right below the chest. January 1st, New Year's Day, 2009. Greg's life changed forever, but his attitude did not. When he came in, it actually blew me away. I've never seen someone with more zest for life than Greg. Now, Greg is training for his biggest challenge yet, a half Ironman in Montauk. If you don't give it 100%, it's, just, it's not any good. And with that, it's off to Montauk. Be happy, have a great safe race, and we'll see you down at the water's edge. It's hard to put into actual words. I mean, I'm nervous, scared, excited. To complete this race, Greg has to travel a little more than 70 miles. First leg is a 1.2 mile swim. But as you know, Greg's legs have no function, which means his plan is to backstroke and focus. Two, one. It's kind of remembering for yourself out there, so just try to stay calm and composed and just hope, just hope you finish. As Greg tries to navigate the waters, two people eagerly look for him, his parents. This is nothing. It's what inspires me is how he wakes up every morning, gets out of bed. Those are the things no one sees that we do. Finally, at one hour, two minutes and five seconds, Greg finishes the swim. In a race against time, officials rush him to the transition area, quickly get him into his hand cycle, and he's off, embarking on a 56-mile bike ride. The bike was good. The headwinds were, were a little heavier than I thought they were going to be, which slows things down a little bit, but I, I, I had a good bike that I wanted to. A ride that began at 8 a.m. is finished after nearly four hours and 15 minutes. Greg is tired, but his will has yet to waver. The last leg, you feeling good? Yeah, let's finish this. Greg is just 13 miles away from finishing, but there's one more mountain to climb, Murder Hill. <sighs> Using just his arms and his heart, Greg's struggles inspire others. Sure, you're doing awesome! Got it! It's so tedious and, and painful, but I think like if, you, if you just stop, it's overwhelming. Finally, he conquers Murder Hill and heads home. A journey that began four years ago ends today in a time of seven hours, 26 minutes, and 33 seconds. Across that finish line, there's no better feeling. That's really what kind of why I do this. And just work hard and it, it gets you somewhere. I think it's I think it's an important lesson. Ah! Oh. Jamie Stewart, News 12, Long Island.